So there's a lot of AI tools coming up, popping up every day. There's 10 new apps that you get ads for on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. But I wanted to test and see if Copilot Pro was actually going to be beneficial in kind of streamlining workflows or making my life easier when it comes to using Copilot and integrating it into PowerPoint, Word, all the stuff that I work in every day. The first question is, what is Microsoft Copilot Pro? So it is, in a very broad sense, Microsoft's term for, or their brand, for their AI functionality. So similar to Google Gemini, um, it has its search functionality. You can use it on Bing. You can figure out, it can generate auto responses to your questions, things like that. The part that I'm more interested in is the functionality that they've built in where the AI assistant, kind of like how Apple has introduced their AI intelligence or their Apple intelligence features, Microsoft Copilot Pro integrates into the applications that you use every day to streamline some of the ways that you do things. So how you analyze data, how you build out a present presentation on PowerPoint, how you structure your content on Microsoft Word, all of that stuff is covered by Copilot Pro. So that's the, generally the quick introduction. I'll do more of a demo later to kind of show you what it's capable of, um, but just think of it as market Microsoft's brand for AI and they build it into their applications, which I think is really cool. Okay, so let's talk pricing. They have a free version of it, which is just kind of the general search functionality. So if you go to Bing, uh, as an example, as a search platform, and you type in a question, it'll say co-pilot option, which will generate you kind of a chatbot situation. Um, so that's free. Similar to Google Gemini, similar to ChatGPT, similar to, I think that's it. But they are, it's kind of like different questions that you can ask and it does a prompt. So the paid version of it is actually $20 a month, which is a little steep if you're just doing it as an individual. Um, but if you do it through your company, it actually can be part of the Microsoft 365 package. So you can get a little bit more bang for your buck in that situation if your company's paying for it. Uh, but $20 a month is the running rate. And then obviously if you do the enterprise model, you get more of a discount. But that was the model that I used was the $20 a month uh, Microsoft Copilot Pro. So what is my experience with Copilot? I will run some B-roll just to kind of show you um, what I was able to do with it. So cool functionality. You're able to draft documents and presentations. So from drafting reports to creating presentations, uh, this was actually a real game changer for my daily use. Um, it augmented a lot of what I was doing. So if I had a presentation or a slide that I wanted to build, I could type in a prompt into the, the uh, Copilot Pro. The actual interface is connected to the application. So while you're in the application, you get information or a little prompt that says, what do you want to add? You can type in the information. It, it auto populates it for you, which I think is really cool. And then you kind of go through and edit the way that you want. So from a presentation standpoint, this has saved me a lot of time, just getting content on the slides, designing it the way that I want. What I found, which was kind of an issue, is it doesn't always respect your um, the, brand, the brand guidelines that you have on the master file. So if you create, if the, and I just say this as somebody who works in a lot of uh, branded PowerPoints, if you try to create a presentation and you ask Copilot to create a slide for you or a series of slides for you, um, it'll create the content, but it won't necessarily stand to the brand guidelines. So I found that I, while it was helpful to get everything in the slides, I kind of had to go back and redesign the slides to fit what I needed it to be. What I found with Excel was pretty cool. It was a little limited from for what I was trying to do. Uh, but if there's data in there and you, you know, there's all different types of data things that you can do in Excel and I'm not an Excel master by any means, but I tried to run a regression as an example, just to see kind of if it was able to, if it was capable of running something bigger like that. There was some simple data analysis. So, you know, if you have a data, if you have like your variables in one column and then you have two columns of data based on findings, you can ask, uh, you can ask Copilot Pro a question and say, which was the highest or what percentage had the most. And it'll give you, um, for what I found, it was pretty accurate. It got most of the answers correct. But I also, if I'm working heavily in Excel, I don't know if I would quite trust Copilot um, to be able to run all of the types of data analysis that I need, because I think part of, part of the issue with some of these AI models is it doesn't quite understand the context of why you're asking your question. So for me, if I'm running a report and I want to know okay, what is this percentage? I'm looking for an answer to a specific question, but I have to phrase that question in a way that the chat interface can understand it, if that makes sense. I don't know. Tell me in the comments if I'm making sense here. I feel like I'm rambling, but I'm hope hopefully that makes sense. Well, and then the third thing that I tried out was uh, Microsoft Word. Absolutely no issue with this. 
word processing large language models, I wasn't really surprised that it was working really well. Um, there's no guarantee that the data is accurate. So let's say you're creating a section on something very technical, or you need to write something or create an outline for something really technical. Sometimes when you produce that, it doesn't always look the way that you want it to, or it doesn't sound the way that you want it to, um, which is generally large, large language models. For example, ChatGPT does the same thing, um, where it's like, it, it sounds fancy and it sounds fine, but it doesn't, it's not quite accurate or it doesn't quite do, you know, what you need it to. What I will say is it was ex extremely helpful if I just needed to write. So if I'm writing out, let's say a plan for something, and I just need to have a quick description of, let's say a target audience group. And I say, Hey, can you write a quick overview of this target audience? And then it just produces a paragraph. I'm like, perfect. That's all I needed. Um, that kind of thing was really, really helpful. I didn't need it to write out the whole document, but even like scripting this video, I'm like, okay, I can talk about my experience, but I need you to write a paragraph about what, what specifically I need to talk about in this segment. So it was really helpful in that context, just being able to, um, process the information, get through what I needed to get through and kind of augment my workflow to make it a little more fast, faster. Okay. So I think I've rambled long enough about the benefits, what it can do, the demos. I've, you saw the B roll, you kind of know the pricing, you know, if it's a good investment for you. The big question is, is this actually something that you should be investing in? I would say, I would say there's two different camps. There's one camp of people who maybe you don't work within Microsoft very often, or you're not really, you don't do much labor intensive work to the point where you need to focus on using Microsoft a lot, I would say don't waste your money. I don't even think using the free version of Copilot would actually benefit you. Um, if you, because there's a lot more free tools that you can use online. If you need to do a presentation builder, if you need Canva, like there's so many other options um, that you can do to build out the content that you need if you're only doing it a small amount of times. If however, you are using it as a power user. So I use it every day for my desk job. If you can put together a business case, send them, send your boss this video and say, Hey, I think we need to get Copilot. If it's something that you feel like will benefit your workflow that you can try and it's a subscription model. So you can sign up for a month, try it out. If your team hates it, then get rid of it. Um, but I think this would be a really cool thing for you to try. And if you're, if you're not able, or if you're not the one paying for it, it also makes it a lot easier, but um, I would say this tool would be really helpful for power users. And once you get it ingrained as part of your workflow, I think it'll be really hard to remove. I'm kind of going back and forth about whether or not I want to keep using it because I think the second that I step away from it, I will find it to be more difficult to start doing all of that stuff myself versus if I can do it through Microsoft Copilot Pro. So that's my kind of summary. If you're looking for more information on how to augment your workflow, check out this video that I did about Grammarly. Um, might be another good option for you if you're not interested in Copilot Pro. But with that, I will see you on the next one.